Hello friends and welcome back to my shop. It is nearing the end of the year and I realize there's things that I use every day that make my life so much easier that I wish I could go back in time and tell myself, be like, hey, buy that or make that because it's gonna make your life way easier. So in this video, we're gonna go over the 10-ish things uh, that I use on a weekly-ish basis that make my life much easier, which is a horrible video title. <laughs> So this list is in no particular order. It's just things that I've used that I find efficient and that I wish I had purchased a long time ago. And one of those things is a label printer, a thermal printer to be specific. Um, I do a lot of shipping of packages and in the past I'd always just run labels through an inkjet printer and then like cut them and peeled them out and extracted the you know information from PDF. It's just so annoying. Just being able to save 20 seconds per order and just hit print and it comes out of the machine. I, I should have done this a long time ago. And I was always put off because they're like, you know, three, 400 bucks for a good one, or at least in my country. Uh, so I've bought an off-brand one. I should have probably bought a nice one because the off-brand one is honestly more work um, than it needs to be, but it is also light years better than what I was doing in the past. So if you if you sell product, that's a, that's a really important thing to do. It'll make your life better. Another thing that I use way more often than I thought I would uh, is my CO2 laser cutter. And I realize that's a pretty big tool. Um, it's like probably almost in like the mill and lathe kind of category where it's, you're not, it's not something you're just gonna pick up on a whim. But if you do any kind of shipping or wanna make your products pretty, a laser cutter is just so nice because it is very easy to work with. It's basically like a printer, except you can cut stuff with it. I use it to cut shipping foam. I use it to cut uh, masking materials. I use it to cut internal stuff for my shop all the time. Um, yeah, I use the bejesus out of that laser cutter. If it ever blows up on me, I will buy a very nice version because I'm constantly using it. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't do what I do without it. I mean, I, I technically could with knives and stuff like that and cutting and finagling. It just, it wouldn't look as pretty and it wouldn't be as fast and it wouldn't be as efficient and I would have to charge more. So yeah, CO2 laser cutter is huge on my list. I use that thing way more than I thought, way more than I thought I would. Now we're going to get into the kind of more specific things um, that probably pertain to my industry, which is like manufacturing and production and stuff. But um, one major thing is being able to see what you're doing. Loops. Loops are a huge thing. You could get like a fancy microscope and I want like a nice, you know, stereo microscope so I can see the work up close and personal. But just having a little jeweler's loop, a, a 10 times, a 20 times, a 30 times, whatever you can find is so nice because you can inspect little parts. I'm using it continuously. Um, I have one basically on my desk at all times. Super important um, because if you can't see what you're doing and some of my work is very tiny, like I have 256 size screws and little threading and end mills and just being able to quickly examine it really closely and see, you know, if this tool has a chip in it or something like that, just it saves me a bunch of time. I, that's another tool that I'm surprised how much I am reaching for it and I should honestly have more of them because I have, I have one nice loop and I'm constantly walking around the shop trying to find it. So I should either put it in my coat pocket or something. Anyways, they're very useful, get some. Another thing that might be specific to kind of my industry is uh, calipers, being able to accurately measure what I'm working with. And you can have a nice set of calipers for, you know, your final measuring or, you know, bringing into finish tolerances, but having a bunch of cheap calipers is really helpful because nine times out of 10, I'm just like chopping up raw stock and I want to get it close, you know, plus minus whatever. Um, way more accurate than the calipers are ever gonna be, even the dirt cheap ones. And they're dirt cheap, so I don't mind using them as scribes or if I drop them on the floor, that doesn't hurt my feelings. Or if, you know, if they get covered in gunk and stuff, I, it's they're easy to part with. Cause you know, if they're 20, 20 to 50 bucks for, you know, a cheap pair, it's a lot less painful than dropping your two, $300 pair. Um, so yeah, have a bunch of them because uh, you can afford a bunch of them. And uh, yeah, they make life easy. I, I'm amazed how much I use my cheap calipers more than I use my fancy measuring gear because uh, yeah, it's like I said, just convenient and I'm not worried about them. I can abuse them. Along the line of having multiple tools is having multiple places for these tools. So I've 3D printed little jigs to hold wrenches for my mill. I have Kaizen foam inserts for all my tools around the shop. I have little holders near my lathe for other tools. Just having little places where everything goes and you put it there every single time because then you your mind always knows where it is. Like if I have to find my calipers, I know exactly where at least two are in my shop at all times because they're always there. I always make sure I put them back. And they're easy to put back, which means I'm gonna put them back as opposed to setting them on my desk. Cause I set them on my desk, I'll never find them. Like my desk is perfectly clean, but I won't look there for it because my brain doesn't work that way. So anyways, that, that helps me work efficiently. It's just finding homes for everything. You don't have to use fancy foam. You go to the Dollar Tree and just buy some foam board and put your tools in that or just outline them on a soft mat or something. Just something where it's easy for you to put it away and pick it up. To me, Kaizen foam works. Some people it doesn't, but yeah, I've, I'm really enjoying that. That makes my life super easy. 
I like working in a clean shop and uh, basically the way to trick myself into having a clean shop is to make cleaning really, really easy for me. Um, so I like I have air blasts on the machines and little chip brushes and stuff, but air blasts usually force chips into some places they shouldn't be, or it just throws it in the air and lands on the floor and you gotta clean it up anyways. Uh, so my weapon choice is a vacuum. I keep a vacuum under my CNC router. I empty it once a week. It's got a nice long hose. I can just grab it and I can get to any machine in the shop and I can quickly clean stuff up. It takes me like five or 10 seconds and I can just move forward. Um, just having it under my CNC router is convenient, but I want it more convenient. So I'm gonna, the next step here is to relocate it and then to basically have even a longer hose on a reel and a remote switch. So I can just grab it and hit the remote switch, suck something up, put it back, turn it off. That's like, it sounds so stupid, but just being able to save like five, 10 seconds, it, I'll make, I'll do it more often. I'll clean more often, which makes cleaning even easier. So yeah, very important for me is to keep things clean, especially with a small space. I wanna keep everything nice and tight. Along that same line of like shop organization and cleaning is wheels. Wheels on everything. Whatever I can put wheels on, I'll put wheels on. I'm not, I don't have wheels on my mill and my lathe because I don't want them you know, driving around my shop. But like my computer cart here has wheels on it. My giant table saw station has wheels on it. My cart has wheels on it. I have a garbage can here that doesn't have wheels on it. It is gonna have wheels on it because just being able to move stuff with just like quick pull or just give it a push to get it out of my way, so nice. And I mean, casters are dirt cheap nowadays. You can get, you know, nice sets for next to nothing. Uh, so yeah, I have, I actually have a set of casters just waiting, just four casters waiting there for some purpose. Cause I know I'm going to find something to put wheels like garbage can, right? I'm going to put them around those. Just being able to quickly move stuff around like that is paramount for me, especially big, heavy things. Like my table saw station is like 500 pounds. So if I need to get access back there, I just pull it out, walk back there, push it back. It's like super, super convenient wheels on everything. It's weird how much of my stuff is actually just devoted to organization and whatnot. Um, but another tool that I absolutely love is a label printer. I use a label printer way more than I thought I would. And I resisted buying one forever because they're not exactly cheap. Um, this one was actually on my Christmas list like last year. It's a nice fancy one. Um, it's got a lithium battery, it's rechargeable. Um, you pop labels into it and you can print labels. I like that because I can print nice, clean, concise labels that are easy to read. I can stick them on, I have a bunch of chemical tubs. I stick them on that. I stick them on um, you know, jars of cleaners. I just everything, anything that I've used, all my pens, they're all, I have them all in batch numbers. I have like one to 24 or whatever. And I have all these little bins. I print labels for those because then I, I have like a little shop uh, like tracking. I can track every part that I make and, and keep it like parts together. So yeah, just, you could definitely do it with a piece of tape and a Sharpie. I just, I like the neatness of, of a machine printed label and it just, it pleases my brain. And just every time I look at it, I'm like, ah, I'm happy. So yeah, I resisted buying one for so long. I don't know why I did. I just, even a cheap one, like the little ones that punch, you know, dent the material and stick it on, that would have been way useful as well. So a label printer changes lives. I, I'm very happy with it. Another thing that I find super useful is a place to store all my small parts, all my lathe tooling, mill tooling, basically just every little itty bitty tiny part having a nice area for them to go. Um, I actually built my own storage boxes based off Alexander Chappell's design. Well, it's not based off, it's actually his design. I, I bought his, uh, his plans and I'll link it up here. Um, and I built a bunch of these cases. I built eight of these cases and they all have 3D printed boxes. There's hundreds and hundreds of boxes I have now. Um, and I devoted one to my mill, one to my lathe, one to every pen style I own. So if I have to buy tools from my mill, I just open the box and I have little foam cutouts where I keep my tools. So if I have my chamfer tool in there, I have three holes. So I have a chamfer tool that's, you know, brand new. I have one that's in use and I have a spare or something like that. Yeah, just example. Um, but if I open it and I see one of the slots is empty, I know I have to order one. Um, and it's just, it's one thing off my mind. I even get crazy and I'll put like the part number and the manuf like where I bought it from right in that little box. So when I have to order, I just grab the little thing out and be like, oh, I ordered it from here and this is the part number. And it, uh, it's one less thing to think about. Um, it's really important for me. I really enjoy that. And it keeps everything nice and neat. Once again, and neat and out of sight and like out of the air and it doesn't get dust on it and I can just grab a bin. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of organization if you can't tell by this video. Another thing that kind of deserves honorable mention would be 3D printers. I don't use 3D printers as much as some people, um, but I use them a ton for just 3D printing jigs to hold something in the shop or to organize something. Um, and in that aspect of it, they're perfect because I can design it and I just put it on there and I can walk away. I don't have to machine it. I don't have to think about it. It nine times out of 10 produces what I want and they're cheap enough nowadays where almost anybody can afford a 3D printer. I mean, you mow enough lawns, you can buy a 3D printer nowadays. Um, and yeah, like I use mine for those storage bins. That's that's paramount. I've you know printed hundreds of boxes on my printers. Um, but yeah, just having a little stupid niche need, like, hey, I have to hold this part exactly like this, but it doesn't have to be precision. I don't have to machine the part, just something to hold it. That's where my 3D printer comes in. And uh, yeah, they're super useful for that. I use them for cleaning jigs, um, like part drying jigs. I, that's they get used all kinds for that. Um, I print a lot of it out of ABS nowadays um, or PETG just because it's high temperature stuff. But yeah, that's a, uh, that's, they're useful for that. 
I also use some knickknacks, but that's, that's where I use mine is just for printing from storage and organization stuff. Sometimes I buy a tool because I have a specific need for it and I know it'll solve it. Um, and this tool is exactly that. It's a little rotary tool. So I had a Dremel for the longest time and I never used it because they're like hurricanes are super loud. I don't find them ultra precise. They're really woggly. I just, they're not comfortable and fun to use. This thing, however, is fairly quiet. Like I can, I can comfortably use it without, you know, bothering my ears. It's got hardened steel collets, so they actually, you know, run fairly concentric. Um, it's got a nice cord on it. And it's nice and light and tiny. Big fan of it. It's fairly inexpensive, 100 and something bucks. If I blow it up, I will buy another one immediately. It lives on my desk, like right now. That, that's how close it is to me. It lives on my desk where my computer and everything is because I use it so often. I'm, I always, I have rubber abrasive wheels on it. I use it for part cleaning or for buffing. I put little uh, like 3M scotch Bright wheels on it. I just use it more than I ever thought I would. Um, so yeah, if uh, I'm not a fan of the Dremels, like I said, they're just too loud, but the little Proxon rotary ones, totally not sponsored by them, but it would be because I, I love this little tool. I mean, if you got the funds to do, you know, your deburring with a, a nice, you know, micro motor tool, that's great. Um, but these are literally a factor of 10 less money. Um, so until I uh, can justify like a thousand dollar deburring tool, I will use this tool because uh, yeah, big fan. So that's the bulk of it. That's basically the main tools that have their most bang for their buck, at least in my instance. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. I'm sure there's a million I could add, but I got to end the video at some point. Um, so that's where we're going to stop it. The next thing I'm working on immediately when I finish editing this video, not immediately, it'll be hours after I'm finished editing this video, but... Oh! The Hardinge works. The Hardinge is spinning. Um, I have the uh, ClearPath servo owners. I have the Mesa uh, interface cards, uh, Raspberry Pi for the cards, um, power supplies, dry, basically everything to make this thing go. And that's next on my list is I'm working on this thing until it is moving because there's snow on the ground and this isn't running yet. So I haven't quite met my goal, but I've also been building a bushel of stuff. So uh, once again, I appreciate you all for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you later.